Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're all doing well and had a great holiday season and a good New Year's. This video is going to be a little bit different from me, a bit more of a shorter, lower effort video than I'm used to making so that I can get my thoughts out there sooner rather than later because in a way it kind of feels like time is of the essence. Let me first say that Escape from Tarkov Arena has been an enormous breath of fresh air for me. As somebody with over 10,000 hours playing Tarkov since 2017, I admit I'm kind of just over the normal Tarkov gameplay loop. What I really crave these days is the combat. An arena, coupled with some of the recent changes that have come along with the wipe, has completely reignited my interest in the game. Now, just like Tarkov, in Arena, when everything goes right, there's no other experience like it. Winning is awesome, and even losing can be a good time, just as long as the game doesn't get in your way. Now, that being said, the game does obviously have its issues, and it's clear some of these problems are both not well understood by the community, most of the solutions presented by the community are either insufficient to address some of the problems that we're facing, or are merely the kinds of band-aids that have plagued Tarkov's design for the better part of a decade, and there's been no indication from BSG thus far that I'm aware of that they're either aware of some of these specific issues, or are going to address them in a way that I think is going to be effective. At this point, every change they make early in the development of the game is going to have ripple effects and unforeseen consequences for years to come for literally millions of players, so considering these things as early as possible is going to be critical. I'm sure some of these things are already being worked on by BSG, and they probably have different takes on some of these issues, as well as different solutions, but the feedback I'm going to provide will hopefully be valuable for everybody to consider, as it will nevertheless give valuable context and perspective regarding the nuance of some of these issues and potential solutions. So, let's just hop right into it. The biggest problems with Arena at the moment stem from the interplay between the progression systems, the design and the balance of the presets, and the matchmaking that attempts to combine it all together. First, Arena Rating Points, or ARP, is not an accurate representation of skill or a reliable metric for evaluating any kind of serious or casual competitive rating. Second, meta points, or MP, what people colloquially refer to as gear score, is not an accurate representation of the strength or viability of a particular preset. Third, the current matchmaking system currently utilizes both of these flawed metrics in what seems to be a flawed way, creating a situation where a massive amount, perhaps even a majority, of the games that are played at all skill levels are not remotely fair or balanced in terms of skill or gear. Now, finally, the progression in the game is quite bland at best, and at worst can be extremely frustrating and limiting, which has negative ripple effects on not only individual player performance, but also team performance, which exacerbates the issues with player ratings and matchmaking further. Currently, in order to unlock a preset, you are required to use the preset right before it in the tree, earning XP in a match according to both your individual performance and the overall results of the match. Given the same relative performance, you tend to get roughly double the XP for a win as a loss, ranging from about 4,000 to 8,000. Now, it is noteworthy enough to mention that with the latest adjustments, it's possible to get more XP on the losing team than someone on the winning team if you perform very well and they perform very poorly which I personally see as an improvement over what we originally had, as before you could often perform very well, sometimes getting 16, 17, 18 kills and still losing a game, and getting like no XP for that really sucked. Now briefly summarizing a bit of the progression system, unlocking a tier 2 preset usually requires about 20,000 XP. Tier 3 presets cost around 50,000 EXP, Tier 4 costs 150,000 XP, Tier 5 costs 300,000 XP, and Tier 6 costs about 400,000 XP. Now, anecdotally, depending on a number of factors, my average time to complete a match from the start of the queue to the end result is something on the order of about 20 minutes. Now, assuming an average performance with an average of 50% win rate, we're looking at getting about 6,000 XP per game, meaning that we can earn roughly 18,000 XP per hour while playing the game as an average player. Now what that means is that it'll take a little bit more than an hour to unlock your first tier 2 kit, nearly 3 hours for the tier 3 kit, 8 hours to unlock the tier 4 kit, another 16 hours to unlock a tier 5 kit, and then finally another 22 hours to unlock your final tier 6 kit. So overall, unlocking one tier 6 kit requires something like 50 hours of gameplay, assuming average performance and matching times. If your queue times are a few minutes longer, your games are a little bit slower, and perhaps you're not the best player or you're struggling in your matches, you may only be able to get in two games per hour and an average of 9k XP in that time, literally doubling how long it will take. Now this might be a hot take, but I'm personally okay with things taking that long to unlock. I don't mind a bit more of a grindier progression in a game, as long as the grind itself is enjoyable. And therein lies the problem with Arena. It's not. The vast majority of the time, the grind is infinitely less enjoyable than it actually could be. 
Now, this is because you're either locked into using something that you dislike for dozens of hours, because what you're using is inherently bad or annoying to use because of odd choices of things like what and where attachments are mounted, because it forces you into one specific play style or strategy for all of the wrong reasons in the worst kind of ways, because you feel like you're playing against players that aren't remotely close to your skill level in either direction, so you're either not challenged or stand no chance, and because when you finally manage to spend all that time unlocking the next kit, you realize in some way that it's an upgrade, but in other ways it might not be. And now you have to spend twice the amount of time with this kit, facing all of the same issues that you just went through, except now you're against people who are using stuff that was even better than before. Now, without giving you all of the details about the history of my entire arena progression, I can say that I've experienced about as wide of an experience in terms of skill and gear on both sides as you could reasonably have at this point. I've played in lobbies of solo players with free kits at less than 1,000 ARP. I've top fragged multiple games playing against and alongside some of the top players in the world with ARPs approaching 5,000. I've been carried by teammates after switching to tier 2 and 3 kits against those same best players in the world and then gone solo against teams of 1,700 ELO players with better gear and couldn't get a single kill in. I've played both solo and with groups of varying sizes and of varying skill levels, with myself being around 3,000 ARP, running high mid-tier presets, competing against similarly skilled players while I was using comparable gear, as well as playing against those same players while my gear was four tiers lower. And I've both suffered and had fun to varying degrees at different times. I also went and purchased a second account to test out what the experience would be like for a normal FPS Tarkov gamer freshly hopping into Arena weeks after others have been playing and progressing, and have experienced some interesting things during that time as well. What I can say after all of that is, something drastically needs to change. An unfortunate side effect of some of the issues initially introduced during the first few weeks of testing is that now we're in a place where any minor tweaks or adjustments simply aren't enough to correct the state that we're in. Right now, there are so many players whose ratings are nowhere near an accurate reflection of their skill level. Some having been carried to much higher ratings than they should be, some having been screwed by some of the initial balancing issues to the point where their ratings are far below the starting ratings, and the starting ratings are filled with players with thousands of hours of EFT experience just starting Arena today, alongside people who look like this is the first FPS game they've ever played. Now, in my opinion, no amount of balancing tweaks or matchmaking adjustments can be made to the current system to remedy where we are. So many of the reasonable solutions or restrictions that they'll need to implement eventually couldn't be added into the game right now as they would make things even worse. One such example would be putting a restriction on the ARP range of players that are grouped up together for a competitive match. Ranked matchmaking will never work if a 5,000 ARP player can queue with a 500 ARP player, and right now you can do that. But right now, because of how imbalanced everything was, and in many ways still is, and how unreliable of a metric ARP is in regards to skill, largely because of that imbalance, all you'd ultimately be doing is just siloing people off that might actually have similar skill levels from playing with their friends and having a good time. Before we'd be able to actually benefit from things like balancing tweaks and party restrictions based on rating, the factors that we're using to base those tweaks and restrictions on need to actually be accurate and meaningful, and right now, they aren't. Now, I have to take a second to explain why I disagree with the overwhelming majority of suggestions that I hear from the community. Some people take their personal experience of constantly getting stomped by opponents with one or two particularly OP presets and conclude that the solution is that the preset needs to be nerfed. While at the same time, the people that are running those OP presets that are stomping on them are either finally happy that they can compete for once now that they spent the time grinding to get that first good kit in the tree, or they're frustrated at how long their grind is to the next preset and are sick of getting stomped by the presets that are too ahead of theirs. And then everybody just comes to the conclusion that the solution is to make kit selection happen before matchmaking so that it will only match you up against people with the same gear score. These are not solutions, and I'll explain why. Now first, any nerfs or adjustments will almost always serve to fix one specific issue or imbalance while at the same time creating one or more elsewhere. This is just the nature of balancing. Your idea may or may not improve your specific interpretation of your current situation right now, but it might just be moving the goalpost a little bit further into the future. I've seen it all. On day three, everybody was bitching about the Alton kits being super OP and they begged for a nerf. During this period of time, all the Alton dudes were crying that they couldn't kill the Gen 4 dudes or the MPX dudes because their kit only had BT ammo and they were begging for a buff. 
And then a few days later, BSG nerfed the Alton kits by reducing the durability of the armor it's had. And then all of the Alton dudes by now had moved on to the even more OP Guardian and Butcher kits. At which point everybody that was crying about the Altons a few days before were now running that kit and were getting stomped. Now meanwhile, I had just spent the last three days getting my rating up, making a ton of progress, ultimately getting bored with the presets I was using and wanted to make a switch, so I had swapped over to the Marksman tree. And now I was using Tier 1, 2, and 3 Marksman kits against Tier 5 and 6 CQB kits against the best players in the world. You want to talk about impossible? That's impossible. The whole idea that selecting a preset before queuing so that matchmaking can use your gear score fails not only in principle, but also in practice, given the current systems. And we know this because for all intents and purposes, we have that now, and it doesn't work in the vast majority of cases. The current matchmaking takes into account your ARP, as well as some metric for evaluating your gear score based on what you've recently used in your past games. Now, some people will say, well, that's not the same thing. Well, yeah, it's literally not the same thing, but functionally it is. Remember how annoying and grindy that progression is? The fact that it takes 5, 8, 20 hours of playing on one set of gear to unlock the next? What that means is that the vast majority of games, people are using exactly what they used in the last few dozen games. So if everybody is using what they used last game, and matchmaking considers what you used last game to match you for this game, that's indistinguishable in the vast majority of cases from a system that requires you to choose your gear for this game before matchmaking for this game. Now, while the recent changes they made to consider your recent gear score in matchmaking has reportedly improved some people's experiences, although I always hear about it in the context of people who have run out of money and are now running that free kit for a few games, which isn't exactly the typical experience, many other people have said things got worse for them after this change as well. Now, personally for me, I can't tell that anything's changed. And in my specific case, whenever I want to downgrade and try to level up something new, it doesn't appear that there's literally anybody that's doing that at my rating. So the best the game can do is place me against people who are one tier below me in rating, while at the same time two or three tiers above me in terms of gear, which depending on what you're selecting, it's effectively impossible to win against them. Now, not only that, but requiring you to choose your gear before matchmaking causes a number of other issues. It would almost definitely lead to longer queue times, because people would be forced to restrict where they're going to queue based on what preset they're going to use. At this point, a lot of people are trying to level up two trees. And let's say one of those is a marksman class that's best suited for a map like Bowl or Sawmill. Now, these presets struggle on some of the smaller maps, and right now, people are able to queue up for all the maps they like and let the map selection that results from matchmaking sort of determine what they're going to use for that match. Oh, okay, it's one of the small maps, I'll use my CQB kit. Oh, okay, it looks like it's Sawmill, I'll use my sniper rifle kit. If you have to pick your preset before matchmaking, you're potentially limiting the maps that you'll queue for, which restricts the potential matchmaking pool, increasing the queue time. Now consider that you're 1700 ARP. You want to level up your tier 3 marksman kit. Your friends range in ARP from 1200 to 2800, and they're rocking everything from random tier 2 kit to some of the higher tier Alton kits and above. Now they're flexible, they're down for whatever, so you decide you're going to queue Sawmill. I'd be willing to bet that you're either going to be waiting a really long time in queue while their matchmaking algorithm tries to figure out who the fuck to put you against, because there's no other five-man squad on Earth with a similar composition of ARP and gear score, or it'll have to do what it likely does already most of the time today, try its best to compromise and match you relatively quickly with maybe a five-man of 2,600 rated players that are all rocking tier five kits, and they're going to absolutely roll you, or a random assortment of 1900s, including one dude who just ran out of money and is playing with a TT, and another really good dude who just switched to Marksman and is on the tier two kit, and they won't stand a chance against your top two players, while the other three people on your team do nothing the entire game. It's these kinds of issues that lead to basically one of the following experiences dominating your day-to-day -day arena gameplay. You're either playing with guns that are frustratingly difficult to use in the ways required to counter the majority of the enemies you're coming up against, so even against much worse players, you simply can't win. You're playing against players that are significantly better than you, so you just can't win. You're solo playing against coordinated squads that have better comms, that either have better gear or are much better players with the same rating and the same gear as you, which makes it feel impossible to win. You're playing with teammates that are significantly worse than you and or your opponents, so unless you ace every round, you have no chance of winning. 
And because even these lower ranks contain people that are kind of competent, no matter what you do, you're simply not good enough to overcome the imbalance and basically 1v5, even against players that are decently worse than you. You're playing with players that are significantly better than you, carrying you throughout your games and boosting your rating higher than it should be. Now this can actually be made even worse if your friends are underrated. Because given the fact that you're sitting in Discord with a squad of friends, which gives you an inherent advantage over a normal solo queue, you're very likely going to be playing against people who are less coordinated, less geared, and less skilled than you would normally be facing solo, which drastically amplifies this imbalance even further. This has already been promoting a meta of having an alternate kind of smurf account and then just boosting or carrying your friends or being boosted or being carried, which just makes all of this much worse. This behavior is further incentivized by the fact that five-man squad matching times are basically instantaneous as long as one or two of the members are lower rated. The underrated players run around feeling like gods, and you and the others on your team are just along for the ride, boosting your rating, your stats, and fast-tracking you through the annoyingly long grind to that next preset that's of course going to solve all of your problems as soon as you unlock it. And then of course, after you've been boosted three or 400 ARP, the moment your homies go to bed and you decide to solo queue, you'll be back playing against much higher rated, higher geared players, and are going to get stomped. Now there's a million more subtle little issues that I could go through to try to really hammer home my point, but at this point, if it's not clear, then it probably won't make a difference. So for now, allow me to propose an idea that I think could be a fairly elegant solution to a massive number of the issues that I just discussed. But of course, this isn't the only solution, it's just one of many that showcases how a creative approach to designing a singular system can help address multiple challenges at once. My proposal attempts to achieve the following goals. Completely solves the problem of gear imbalance, maximizes the chances of putting equally skilled players against each other in the same games, makes the gameplay within matches less repetitive, more dynamic, and more interesting, decouples the progression towards unlocking new presets from the forced use of one specific preset that you might not enjoy, promotes rather than punishes experimentation with different presets, and aims to do so without massive fundamental changes to any of the core systems of the game. Implementing an economy like CSGO could be really cool and all, and I've thought about some really awesome ideas similar to that, but that just seems to me like it'd be far too different than what we have now, so there's basically no sense trying to design or propose something like that. My proposal comes in a few different parts, and in some ways comes along with some of the interesting benefits of what you get from a CSGO-like economy system without the complexity. For starters, imagine every account starts with 10 presets unlocked. Five tiers, two presets per tier. Tier 1 presets would basically be sidearms only, with little or no armor. Tier 2 presets would be similar to some of the tier 1 and presets that we have now, basically the scav loadouts. Tier 3 presets would be the basic PMC loadouts, maybe some decent semi-auto rifles, SMGs, not a ton of attachments other than maybe a decent red dot and a laser. Class 2 and 3 armor, and maybe some lower tier helmets or headsets. Tier 4 presets would be nicely outfitted rifles, SMGs, and shotguns, maybe some variable optics, some grenades. And then the tier 5 presets would be the class 4, 5, and 6 armors, helmets, and face shields, the best headphones and optics in the game, AP ammo or flush damage ammo, fully kitted guns with max ergo or minimum recoil, you know, all the Giga Chad stuff. Pretty much everything across the board from tier 3 up should be usable, functional, and enjoyable to use. Sure, they should use some meme presets in there too, but there should be enough viable options that basically everything feels and performs solid. We shouldn't be forced to be using rifles with only canted sights that are half-built with shitty ammo that nobody would ever want to use. Now, playing matches earns you experience just like it does now, but maybe every time you level your character or maybe you earn some arbitrary milestone like 100,000 XP or something, that gives you the ability to unlock a new preset. Right now, we have about 100 presets, but there's no reason why there couldn't be a 1,000. With all of the gun, ammo, armor, and equipment and attachment combinations out there in the game in Tarkov now, there really is the potential for that many unique, fun, interesting, and competitive builds. Literally every gun in the game could have half a dozen different variations, from short CQB high ergonomics builds, to practical mid-range builds, or the big, heavy, but powerful extended magazine suppressor builds. Imagine we have the same trees we have now, they're just bigger, wider, more branches, more paths, more diversity. The order of the presets as you traverse through a tree wouldn't need to go from lower gear score to higher like they do now. It could be however they wanted it. It could be ordered by theme, by gun, by tier, whatever. 
There's tons of room for creativity there. Now imagine that during a match, in a 10 second period before every round starts, or as soon as you're dead, you can see the scoreboard and have the ability to talk to your teammates that are also dead or are waiting for the game to start and are given the opportunity to select the preset that you want to use for the upcoming round. Then imagine that every round has a tier associated with it that you're allowed to choose from, starting with tier one on the first round, kind of like a pistol round in Counter-Strike, going up one tier each round until round five, where at that point it becomes unlimited. This simple change achieves the following. First, it completely erases the problem of gear imbalance within a match. Unless someone intentionally wants to handicap themselves for whatever reason by choosing a lower tier preset than they're allowed, round one has everybody using a tier one kit. Round two has everybody using a tier two kit, and so on. If we all start with a couple of kits for each tier and assuming the presets within each tier can be reasonably balanced, we no longer have the imbalance issues that plague the game currently. Everybody's using gear of the same power level every round. Now, the more you play, the more options you have available to choose from to suit your playstyle and your preferences, what you enjoy using, rather than what we have now, which is the more you play, the more powerful you become, which is inherently problematic in a competitive environment. Now, as a bonus, in my opinion, we also get more excitement and diversity within a single game. You're going to have totally different strategies and metas around what to do when you're rocking pistols and low-tier shotguns, as opposed to light armor and SMG, as opposed to heavy armor and rifles. Right now, what we have is a situation where it's the same three presets ran by every player in every round of the game for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 hours, with any diversity being explicitly punished rather than incentivized. And that's just boring for everybody. Another issue that arises from this is that if you happen to actually go through all of the time and effort to grind out the final kit in a tree, your reward for using it is that you now are making literally zero progress towards unlocking anything else. You're actually punished for achieving your goal. That sucks. High rated players are literally going out and buying alt accounts so that they can play with other gear, which also goes and fucks up all of the matchmaking. This solves that. You're also going to be experiencing a much wider range of gunplay constantly helping you get better at so many of the aspects of Tarkov combat than you otherwise currently do using the same terrible gun for 20 hours straight. The system also has the benefit of providing something that the current system fails to provide, giving players the ability to adapt their gear and strategies to the style and gear and strategies of their opponents. Rounds 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are all going to be unlimited, and you might decide after round 6 that maybe your team needs a sniper or needs someone to run some grenades or flashbangs, so after you die and before the next round starts, you can talk to your teammates about what you want to do next without needing friends to be in a Discord call with you to plan that all out. You actually have the ability to change what you're doing mid-game rather than being stuck using what you chose before you knew who your opponents were. Right now, when you get a game, all you know is the map and nothing else. Sometimes I decide I want to try and level the low-tier kit and then realize I made a massive mistake as soon as I pull up the scoreboard before the first round starts because the team I'm up against is a super sweaty five-man running god-tier gear that are one rake ahead of me. And all I've done is locked in my fate that I won't get any kills or contribute anything and will almost definitely lose. Now this system also kind of forces BSG to add a ton more presets at every tier, which I'm hoping will add to the diversity of guns and equipment that we see. Almost all of the guns in Arena right now are guns I would literally never build in Escape from Tarkov. Very few of them are built to be cool or practical. And like I said, so many of them just feel like memes. They all have one or more aspects that are just frustratingly annoying or bad. Only a handful of them use optics or red dots that I would ever use, and most of them either don't have any, or are the ones that I would never use even if I had the chance. Leading to the meta of what we see now, which is spending the first 30 seconds of every goddamn round, moving dots around, switching over lasers, and going through all the rigmarole just to not have to feel like you're fighting against your equipment setup. Now, while the ability to customize your own kits would be really cool, and there's been some talks of that, that whole discussion opens up a can of worms that there really isn't enough time to talk about now, so the next best thing that's closest to what we have now is basically more presets as there's absolutely no reason why we can't have dozens and dozens of unique, viable, and fun options at every tier. Now, because we've eliminated the gear and balance issue, the results of the games will be much closer to a reflection of the skill of the players. And as such, the ARP is going to be a better reflection on individual player ratings. We can then go back to using ARP as the metric for matchmaking and don't need to introduce any gear score complexity nonsense in that process. 
Once that all gets ironed out, then you can actually add realistic and reasonable restrictions on who can party with who in a competitive setting so that you don't have 1,000 rated players playing alongside 5,000 rated players because it's never going to be fair for anybody and it's just begging for exploitation. This idea to me really does seem like a win-win. And in the grand scheme of things, it's a relatively lightweight solution that solves so many problems while simultaneously adding so much richness and fun to the experience for competitives and casuals. Nikita said it himself that the dream day-to-day -day experience for arena players is to have fun while training to become better at Tarkov combat. This system that I proposed achieves that infinitely more than what we have today. Now, I had originally planned on this video including a list of like 50 different improvements, bug fixes, or issues with core features in the game, like inconsistencies of the kill cam, or the fact that the audio is needlessly worse than it is in Tarkov, ways of improving teammate identification and communication, but this video would have become far longer and much more convoluted than it already is, and I fear that the core idea would be lost in all of that. So for now, just consider how this slightly more nuanced solution tackles the problems that we're facing in Arena today in a fundamentally different way than some of the more basic or heavy-handed answers that most folks in the community keep throwing out as some kind of panacea, like choosing kits before matchmaking and then limiting it by gear score. If BSG were to ever consider a design like this and are interested in implementing it, I would be happy to share all of the little UI and UX considerations that will reduce clicks and eliminate annoyances that could make aspects of this sort of design annoying or cumbersome. It really could be quite enjoyable and lightweight, and it's these kinds of details that make or break the ultimate experience in the end. Of course, there's a ton of elements in my proposal that BSG could implement in their own way. They could make any kinds of adjustments or tweaks. A lot of the examples I talked about when it comes to gear score or tiers of gear or whatever, it's all just kind of arbitrary placeholder stuff for the sake of the conversation. It doesn't need to be exactly like I proposed, but I hope that the essence of the idea can help them in the community perhaps understand some more about where Arena is at currently and where it could be in the future. Anyways, that's my rant. As always, shout out to all of my patrons for supporting me and everybody for all of the love. I appreciate you all and hope you have a great start to your new year. I'll see you out there. I'm watching right now. He's pushing me. He's pushing me. He's pushing me inside, Betty. Really right. He's up top. Yeah, you can get all the way back there. <laughs> you can even lay down right here, bro. Who goes for that? We've done it to this team twice now, making them through that fucking wall. <laughs>